You know, in 2012, I was given the honor and privilege to serve in the Rawlins Blake administration as a director of the Mayor's Office of Women and, and Minority Business Development. Essentially, I was asked to take a ride that was all the way live. And let me explain to you what I mean by that. At the time, I did not know or fully understand, could not wrap my brain around how impactful this journey was going to be. From the beginning, we were given mandates, and those of you who are here that are from the Mayor's Advisory Council of Coalition, you know what I'm talking about. We were given a mandate to go big or to go home. Right, Marty? And we were told to go beyond the, the status quo because the mayor told us to define our own destiny before somebody else will. And the truth to power, the truth of the matter is, Minority businesses have always, for a long time on this journey, has had their future or their destiny de defined. And so we're here today to figure out how do we shape the future, and for minority businesses, how do we then define the destiny. We clearly understood the vision of growing Baltimore and creating a mecca for its entrepreneurs. Over the last two years, we've been, made some incredible strides toward that end goal to bring us here today. Ladies and gentlemen, it simply could not happen without visionary leadership and some incredible gladiators along the way. Last June, when we were presented the opportunity or just uh, received the information that there was a grant available for the U.S. Department of Commerce, I pulled on my team, in particular Christine Bivens, and I called out to Paul Taylor, the director of the Small Business Resource Center that's here. Will that? You got that, Jerome? <laughs> it was a center. I love receiving those kinds of messages. Because what the mayor also wanted was a true integration of services. And so we knew we band together, and these gladiators went forward to, to apply for this grant, and then we received the information that we won. So I thank Christine and Paul for that, and I thank my team, Myron and, and Reginald and others, and then we have this new A team that you'll meet um, later, and that's in Vernon Merrill, Dave, um, David Mosley, and Megan Roundtree that make up this new B MBDA Business Center Baltimore. And then there were the gladiators that you all that are in this audience today. And I don't want to begin to name all of you, but you know that you provided those letters of support um, to go into the grant as well. And then there are colleagues of the cabinet. I see Brenda that's here, um, and Harry Black, and then Calliope should be here in a moment. But the person, you know, who puts this all in place, I learned a long time ago, the keeper of any culture begins at the top. And the person that kind of puts this all in place and the so what big deal about all of this is that as we look forward, as we look outward to figure out how we leverage what's happening on a national scale, this grant makes sense. And so as we continue this journey to see what the end will bring us, I'd like at this time to introduce to you someone who, that visionary leader that we talked about, that person that kind of, that leads all the gladiators, and yes, I do look at scandal, <laughs> down, down the, the road. But I like to introduce her by, because to be a mayor of, of this city is an incredible, um, incredible challenge, and, and I'm sure incredible rewards, and, and the, all the public servants that are sitting here today and in the audience for the city. So I like to always think about the mayor. Um, you know, she gets up, you know, when I got up on Monday morning and saw the snow, I'm thinking about how I get out of my driveway. She's thinking about 600,000 people that she has to deal with. So I like to think in terms of when she gets up in the morning and her feet hits the floor, Satan sits up and shudders and says, oh snap, she's awake. <laughs> and ladies and gentlemen, she is. Mayor Stephanie Rollins. Thank you so much, and, and I can't.
cannot, I say it all the time and I, I mean it, I cannot express how uh, grateful and blessed I feel to have you sharing it on my team. You have been uh, a tremendous asset and a continuing driving force. It's one thing to have a vision, but if you don't have people in places where they can uh, take that vision and put it into action, it's a waste. So I'm just blessed to, to have you and thank you so much for getting us started. On the last day. I am pleased, as I always am, to be in the presence of my Congressman, Congressman Elijah Cummings. I think I'm going to see you on Saturday as well, Money Power Day. Yeah, and he, we have, uh, you know, as leaders do, he is incorporating, um, getting information about the Affordable Care Act as a part of his Money Power Day, and I really appreciate how he uses something that this is we, we we've done every year for a number of years to give people information about how they can get their taxes done, financial literacy education, family li fa financial literacy is not just for the adults, it's for the whole family. And and uh, this year, when it was necessary to step up our game to give better information to the community that is impacted by uh, lack of affordable health care, he is doing it with Money Power Day, and I'm grateful for that. I'm also pleased to be here with my uh, peers on the Board of Estimates, City Council President Jack Young, who is here. <laughs> and Comptroller Joan Pratt. I think she... I think my sorrow stood too close to the Zetas on Wednesday. She was wearing their, their, their blue today. We're going to have to have a meeting and, and shore her back up. Uh, we hosted the uh, Zetas for uh, their uh, City Hall Day. They, they graced us with their royal blue on Wednesday. I know that uh, Councilman Ricky Spector was here and had to leave, and I want to thank Michelle Brown and Jerome uh, Stevens for representing uh, Senator McCauley and Senator Cardin, respectively. And you know it is always a pleasure to have you here, making sure that your senators, our senators, are uh, continuously connected to what's going on in the community, and I really appreciate that. And I cannot express, again, my gratitude. I feel like this is almost an embarrassment of riches. We had the HUD Secretary, Sean Donovan, here earlier this week highlighting the work that we're doing in, in Baltimore. We got uh, the um, Transportation Secretary, uh, got worked with the administration to get us into the president's FY15 budget on our red line, which we were not expecting this year. Uh, and now to have uh, Acting National Director of Minority and Business Development, Alejandra Castillo, here today, I feel like this has been a perfect week uh, for Baltimore. <laughs> Very proud, and again, uh, Sharon, I want to thank you and your entire team, uh, Christine, Myra, and Reginald, for working so hard uh, on this uh, on this grant and, and and the implementation of the award. Last year, the Mayor's Office of Minority and Women on Business Development, led by Sharon Pender, completed or excuse me, competed for a nine hundred thousand dollar three year grant from the U.S. Department of Commerce Minority Business Development Agency to operate an MBDA business center in Baltimore. Ms. Pender's team, in collaboration with the Baltimore Development Corporation, thank you very much, uh, Ms. McKenzie. Uh, their small resource center, and Paul Taylor, I know you're there, you are, good to see you, thank you very much. Um, they collaborated as I am, you know, I, I'm always driving that collaboration in my administration. We do better when we work together, and this is an example of it. Uh, we made history when the grant was awarded to the city of Baltimore, the only municipality to ever win. This grant, the MBDA Business Center, will spur job creation, uh, and almost as importantly, the retention. You know, we, we love it when businesses grow, hate it when they grow and move out. Uh, so this is about growing jobs, but also retaining jobs as well. The award um, will make sure that more minority and women-owned businesses have the support that they need to grow and to thrive. The center fits perfectly into my vision for growing Baltimore through economic empowerment that can stimulate job creation. I want Baltimore to be a mecca for entrepreneurs and a place where small businesses know they can prosper. And we are well on our way. With our new MBD business center, MBDA Business Center, we will seek to assist minority firms in obtaining large-scale procurements, 
contracts and financing awards, assessing established supply chains, facilitating entry and large scale transaction in global markets, and we will help to educate and assist minority firms in joint ventures, teaming arrangements, mergers, and acquisitions. Baltimore's MBDA Center, along with a network of more than 50 across the nation, will assist MBDA clients to achieve higher levels of growth and competitiveness. We decided to house this new entity here uh, to leverage existing resources for both small business the Small Business Resource Center as well as the Mayor's Office of Minority and Women on Business Development. This strategic move enables us to serve all MBD MBEs and to specifically target eligible MBEs with annual revenues of over a million dollars and or that uh, the MBEs that participate in high growth industries such as green technology, clean energy, healthcare infrastructure, broadband technology, among others. In order to provide the best services and to reach our goal, we need the best and the brightest. And I am happy to announce our A team. Playing the role of Mr. T, Mr. Vernon Mara. <laughs> Vernon is our <laughs> he is our project director, and I'm so happy to have him on the team. Dave Mosley, the business consultant. Dave, <laughs> right in my face. Megan Roundtree, our program coordinator. so proud of this uh, A team that we have. The City of Baltimore has operated a minority business program for more than 30 years. And while there's been, uh, there have been incremental successes that we all can point to, I recognize a need for more, uh, to do more, and to have a more comprehensive and holistic approach to achieving parity and job creation. Last year, the Mayor's Advisory Council on Minority and Women-Owned Business Enterprises, and I thank all the members who are here, we released a report, A New Day, A Better Way. The landmark report is a roadmap that will help us reform the city's 35-year-old MBE WBE program and create a new model for accelerating growth and building capacity for the region's minority and women-owned businesses. In October, we created Baltimore's first Supplier Diversity and Inclusion Week in Baltimore, attracting hundreds of business owners to Baltimore, some for the very first time. During that week, I also announced the Mayor's Coalition on Supplier Diversity and Inclusion, and give, I've given them the oversight responsibility for implementing the recommendations made by the Advisory Council's report. So let me just make it plain for you. When I met with this group, I told them my goal. I wanted, when someone said the name Baltimore, when they said Baltimore City, I wanted people in business. I wanted entrepreneurs to think that is where things are happening. If you want to open a business and you are a minority business, a women-owned business, you are a small business, you want to do it in Baltimore. And I told them very plainly, I don't know how to do it. You know how to do it. And I'm asking you to create a roadmap forward to get us there. And if you don't, it's on you, not on me. Because I am telling you, whatever it is that you think will get us there, I'm willing to work hand in hand with you to make sure that happens. And that's why this uh, supplier diversity uh, group, is, uh, the advisory council, uh, is so important to make sure that we don't just have a great plan. And believe you, it's a pretty plan. If you've seen the cover, it's gorgeous. But it has to be more than just pretty. It has to work, too. So that is why I'm, I'm very, very pleased. Recognizing that a majority of contracting dollars are spent in the private sector, we also created the city's first MOU with the private developer of Harbor Point to ensure minority participation through the life of the 10-year private funded project launching programs, such as the Mentor Protege Project to help accelerate growth of minority and women-owned businesses. Our MOU with Harbor Point is a game changer for the city that will continue to use this uh, model in other areas as we continue to grow. Additionally, to ensure that WMBEs are awarded uh, opportunities to participate in the $1.1 billion school construction project, we have convened a group of WMBEs uh, and leaders to ensure that inclusion uh, happens in this process. You know, we can transform this city. Can you, we know what happens. If, if, we just, if we just built one new school, we would be happy all over the city. Just one, because we, we, it hasn't happened. 
in years. But we are building 15 brand new schools and fully renovating at least 30 other schools. And that's just the first phase. We know what that is going to mean for the future of Baltimore, but we also know if we don't do it right, if we don't do it in a way that gives local businesses and local residents opportunity, we'll change the physical landscape and that's, that'll be it. This is an opportunity for us to grow in so many different sectors in our city and to set ourselves up for positive growth for years to come. And my commitment to everyone in the business community is to make sure that we get this right so we are able to magnify this investment to benefit a larger community. We've convened a group of leaders to make sure that there is inclusion and I'm excited about what we are doing all across the minority and women owned business uh, you know, corridor. In keeping with my vision to grow the city of Baltimore by 10,000 families in 10 years, my ultimate goal is to plant the seeds and a clear path to create a new generation of minority and women owned firms who will someday have annual revenues of $100 million or more. The MBDA Business Center Baltimore now becomes one of our key factors that will help accelerate the timeline for achieving our goals. We are open for business and we will continue to see opportunities and resources to create the environment for our entrepreneurial mecca. Thank you for being here to help us celebrate this milestone on our journey. Now, it is my honor and my pleasure in front of Councilman, Councilman Carl Stokes and uh, Deputy Calliope Parthemos, who's made it. It is my pleasure, my honor, to welcome someone I'm very proud to say represents uh, Baltimore in Washington, represents me in Washington, my congressman, my partner, Congressman Elijah Cummings. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I want to first of all thank you for your leadership. And I thank you for leadership that I call practical leadership. See, it's one thing to lead, it's another thing to lead effectively and efficiently. So that at the end of the day, you've accomplished the things that you wanted to accomplish. As I listened to you, I could not help but think about, you know, I could imagine you in the meeting when you were talking to your A-team. Um, because I, I watched how you operate. And it's not about, with you, it's not about flowery words. It's about what do we get done? Who got an opportunity? What business's trajectory of their destiny has been changed? And that's what it's all about. And our mayor is, is truly an awesome leader. And I think the country is beginning to see how awesome she is, and I am very proud of her. She's up there on Meet the Press, kicking butt. <laughs> Go on now. Give her a hand, please. Yeah. I'm here. Also, I want to take, I'm going to be very brief, but I want to take a moment to mention Bridget Smith. Bridget, thank you for being here. Bridget is with, uh, Congressman Sarbanes office and Jen Breeman, who is Jen, uh, Jen with Congress, Congressman Ruppersberger's office. Um, uh, I gotta tell you that not only are our senators very supportive of these efforts, because uh, this is federal money now, um, but Congressman Sarbanes, uh, Congressman Ruppersberger uh, have been very, very strong on these issues. Uh, because we know, we know how important this is. And so, um, I also take a moment to thank Wayne Frazier and Tony Robinson and so many others, Madam Mayor, who have fought the tough fights, sometimes unseen, unnoticed, unappreciated, and unapplauded. But Wayne and Tony and the others, you know who you are, who've been fighting these fights for years. I want to thank you. Your, your, your name may never be on the front page of the Afro. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> or the Washington Post. I'm serious, but when I sit here and I look out and I think about the fighters that fought along with Pete Rawlins, the late Pete Rawlins, and so many others, um, I got to tell you that 
I really appreciate what you have done. Uh, I'm, I'm a, the other day, uh, Secretary Pritzker appeared before the Congressional Black Caucus. And the caucus is a tough group uh, to, to excite. And uh, usually people, by the time they leave, the, the secretaries, they come to meet with us. And by the time they leave, Madam Mayor, they, usually they have the edge down. Because the caucus gives them a, a rough way to go. But I can tell you that when Secretary Pritzker came through, she left with her head high. She came in with her head high, and she left with her head high. Because she is doing an ex outstanding job. And she was telling us that during the last five years, the MBDA assisted minority firms in gaining access to more than $19 billion in contracts and capital while supporting the creation and retention of more than 60,000 American jobs. She said something. And I commend the President, President Obama, and Secretary, President, certainly an MBDA Director Castillo, for straightening this national effort. It is so important. The mayor said it best, but let me say it in another way. Ladies and gentlemen, it's one thing to have opportunity. It's another thing to know about it. Hello. To know about it. That's why she and I worked so hard over and over again trying to inform our citizens of whatever the opportunities are. Now, she mentioned this thing about health care, uh, affordable health care. There are going to be some people after March 31st, after it's been on the radio and the television, and LeBron James has been talking about it, they're going to be late. And they're going to say they didn't know. One of the major things that I love about our mayor is she does every Thing in her power to make sure people know, first of all, the opportunity. But then it's not enough to know. She fully understands that once you know, you have to have the tools to be able to take advantage of it. Ah, da. You know, I, I mean, so often there are people, the opportunity is right there, and they just don't have the bridge, Tony, to get them from here to there. And it might be some advice. It might be some counseling, it may be some money, it may be whatever. But I know that she has instructed the team here to do whatever they can do to help people get over that bridge. As I told my staff, a lot of times $1,000 can mean a million dollars at the critical moment. A little bit of advice at the critical moment can make a difference between night and day. And so again, again, that's the kind of leadership that is being brought to this center. And I know that that's the kind of leadership that will help so many people succeed. So I'm gonna, you know, in 2011, the Obama administration successfully launched a newly designed MBDA Business Center program. Significant changes to the program include an increase in funding and the elimination of geographic boundaries, allowing business centers to provide services to minority-owned businesses anywhere in the nation. Additional changes include longer funding terms, reduced paperwork burdens, the addition of a merger acquisition. And, I'm, and, and uh, Madam Mayor, I was glad that you talked about that whole idea of collaboration. One of the things that I've noticed in, in some of our businesses, and I'm going to say this, and y'all need to hear this. So often, everybody's going to be the king or the queen. Hello. And never wanting to join each other so that they can have some impact and get something done. You, got, you, you, better, you better find people who can do, who you can partner with, so that you can get those opportunities. And I'm sure that, that our, our folk, our A team, will be talking about those things when they counsel you. Because I see too many businesses that they got, they, they, they Wayne, you, you know who they are. They, everybody want to be the president, and nobody get any business. Because they do not have the capacity, but if they join together, they would have the capacity. And as I close, let me say this, I'm so glad that uh, Ms. Cecile here is here. Uh, she leads the agency's strategic efforts to enhance the growth and global competitiveness of minority business enterprises throughout our great nation. And I'm so glad that we have all of you here. 
And I remind you, you got to go out there and give it everything you've got. I know sometimes you all feel like giving up, the business people. I know y'all do. I know it gets hard. I know you go for a contract and do everything in your power, and it just doesn't work out. Sometimes the bank, come on now, will not give you a $5,000 loan of credit. I know. I've been there. I know that sometimes I got paychecks in my drawer. And when I moved from Congress to, to, uh, to the, from my law firm, to, to, when I moved from my law firm to Congress, Wayne, I did not even have the money to even cash my own checks. Some of y'all know what I'm talking about. Come on now. And so opening up a business is a very challenging thing. You got to deal with IRS. You got to deal with the state folk. You got to deal with the city folk. I, I know. But I'm telling you, somebody's watching you. Somebody's watching you, and they, 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 they see you, and they see what you're trying to do, and they want to emulate you. They may be maybe a niece, maybe a cousin. But what we're doing here today, and I know this is the man's vision, is trying to help you build that foundation so that you can first know about the, first of all, have the opportunities, know about them, and then be placed in a position to take advantage of them. And so I want to thank you, and so I'm so glad to uh, welcome Mr. Seal. I'm sorry it was a little bit longer than I thought I would be, Mr. Seal. Please. I think my speech has already been delivered. <laughs> thank you. Good morning. On behalf of Secretary Penny Pritzker, I'm honored to be here today. Um, I'm a product of city, of a city. I'm, I'm a New Yorker. I know what cities can do. I know the potential of cities. I grew up in New York in the 1970s. It's not the New York of today. But I know that minority-owned businesses is, is that catalyst that can change a city. Um, we are here because this agency, the only federal agency in the US government focused on minority businesses. And we know that this country is changing. The demographics are changing. But we also know that if the US is to remain globally competitive, it has to leverage its diversity, particularly its diversity within its business community. When you look, when I travel a lot, you know, Congressman, you're, you're absolutely right. When the secretary went with, uh, to the CBC, she understood that we needed to be in these districts and we needed to echo what the department is doing. So on Monday, I was with uh, uh, Congressman uh, Rangel. He had a minority women business roundtable. Yesterday I was in Orlando where the president delivered an extraordinary speech about women businesses, women as, fa as heads of family, but more importantly, women as economic agents. And today I have this great fortune of being here with with this extraordinary mayor, who I'm, I'm, I'm enamored with her in so many ways, because she not only has a vision, a blueprint, and indeed her, her, her plan is very beautiful, but more importantly, her plan really is visionary. When you read it, when you see it, especially today, when you see it become alive, you know that this city is just destined for such greatness. So thank you, Mayor, for your leadership. So we heard a couple of things today, and, and what draws me is when we, we come together as system thinkers. You know, we can't solve the problem in isolation. And you're right, Congressman, we have to break down the silos, whether they're geographic silos, as we did at MBDA when we made our 44 business centers a national network. But we also have to break down the silos in size. If you're a large business, collaborate with a small business and vice versa. And we also have to break down the silos within our own minority communities. If you're an African-American company, partner with an Asian-American company or a Hispanic-owned company, bring the capacity to bear. This nation cannot afford us to work alone. And that's exactly what MBDA is here for. Today's business center is definitely uh, a dream come true for me because I want to see more cities around this country understand and embrace and leverage their minority businesses. 
Uh, I'm sure that you can walk down any street in Baltimore and see the vibrancy of these, of these businesses. So one of the things that I do want to leave you with is the following. I want to ask you to envision what this country will look like 40 years from now. And the reason I do that is because just uh, two weeks ago, we celebrated MBDA's 45th anniversary. And as it was says, said before, the journey is important to celebrate, to acknowledge, and to understand. But the future, we need to envision what that future looks like. What do we need to do so that we can help MBEs grow in size and scale? We know they're growing. They're growing in numbers. Uh, when we started uh, 45 years ago, there were less than a million, uh, actually less than uh, half a million MBEs in the country. Fast forward 45 years later, we have 5.8 million MBEs. But the challenge is helping them grow in size and scale so that we do have the capacity. Just briefly, MBDA does three strategic things. Access to capital, which continues to be the number one challenge. Access to contracts, both at the private and public sector, local, state, and federal, and access to markets. We know that minority-owned firms are twice as likely to export because of linguistic and cultural ties. We also know that 95% of the world's consumers live outside of the US, so it is only natural that we need to look outside of the US as well for opportunities. But let me stop in terms of one particular vision that I have as I remain as acting director of MBDA, and that's access to capital. Whether it's traditional lending, whether it's alternative lending, looking at family offices, looking at joint ventures, looking at uh, fundings from different areas, but also empowering and strengthening minority-owned banks. Minority-owned banks. Yes. They are the ones who are located in our cities. Yes. They are the ones who understand our challenges as we grow in terms of entrepreneurs. So I'm working very closely with the Treasury Department, with, the, with many of the different departments within uh, the federal government that have an opportunity to help minority-owned banks. So I'm happy to deliver that. In closing, I'll just say the following. This is, this is a passion for me. I am the daughter of a uh, minority business owner who started his business in the Bronx in the 1970s. And I say often that the, the movie Fort Apache the Bronx did not capture it, capture it enough. I remember going with my father, take your daughter to work meant going to the Bronx Terminal Market and having him understand buying. And back then we didn't have many credit cards, so it was all in cash. It was the awe but also the challenges of coming back home and not knowing how can I grow the business? Who am I going to pass this business to? So I come to this job knowing with a great passion that minority-owned businesses are indeed the, the future of this nation. But I also know that we need to be more strategic. Succession planning in our communities is something that people don't know about. We grow the business, they become successful. We think Junior is gonna take it on. Junior perhaps wants to be a Hollywood producer. Mm -hmm. right? What happens to that business? Does it just fall off? Does it just die? Does somebody else buy it? Looking at minority businesses from an entire ecosystem and pipeline. So I am a public servant. I love what I do. But more importantly, I am going to challenge you that if you don't get the answers, call us. If you don't have the information, call us. If you need that bridge that Congressman uh, um, Cummings said, we are here and we are that bridge. So I'm delighted and thank you so much for the support that you continue to give my own business. All right, I am going to ask the Congressman, the Council President, our Comptroller to join us up here because we have an anniversary to celebrate. We're going to stand right up here and get a photo in a second after I read your certificate of recognition on behalf of the citizens of Baltimore. I am pleased to present this certificate to the Minority Business Development Agency, MBDA, in recognition of your 45th anniversary. I'm right on the heels of MBDA. I just turned 40. <laughs> right on the heels. Uh, MBDA has operated since 1969 as the only federal agency created specifically to serve and foster the growth of minority entrepreneurs, serving nearly 660,000 minority businesses globally. I offer this certificate as, an, as a 
in appreciation, excuse me, uh, for your decades of leadership and partnership as we open the MBDA wow. Center in Baltimore. Thank you so much. Look this way, everyone take your photos, please. Everybody's good? Okay. We can't have an opening without having a ribbon cutting, so we just ask you um, your indulgence for just one moment. But today is the debut and the official opening of the MBDA Center, which is located on the third floor, as we talked about coexisting with the um, Small Business Resource Center. But I just want to give Vernon Merrow, who's the, the new director, just um, a, a moment to talk about the vision that ties us all together and then we would have the ribbon cutting. Good morning. Good morning. I'm always the one that stands between the ribbon cutting and the food, and I apologize. <laughs> First of all, it's an honor, a uh, privilege, and a pleasure uh, to be before all of you. Uh, thank you, the distinguished uh, presenters here today, Madam Mayor, Congressman Cummings, House President, City Control. It's a pleasure to be here as well uh, to introduce our opportunity to grow minority business uh, opportunities in the city and in this region. Uh, there's nothing much more that I can say that hasn't already been said other than we are here to execute. We're not here for rhetoric. We're here to get deals done. We're here to find procurement opportunities. We're here to create access to capital, create jobs, retain jobs, and create export opportunities. We've already executed an MOU to bring private equity to businesses that we touch. That is in place today. We're already in the process. Uh, acting uh, Director uh, Castillo mentioned bringing different cultures together to work together. We're in the process right now working on a deal where we're introducing an African-American firm from here in Baltimore to a Chinese firm in New York, in the Bronx, uh, to do a export deal to China. Uh, exporting condiments, exporting dairy products, uh, among other products, uh, to China. So we are working diligently at creating business opportunities uh, across cultures as well as across geographical regions. So we're glad that we have geographical exposure uh, because we're able to work with this firm in New York uh, and work with the Bronx office uh, in New York to make this happen. Uh, so we are aggressively working to make these things happen. Uh, we're aggressively working uh, it's for, to, to search out ideas. Um, I'm looking forward to sitting down with most of you who are sitting in this audience. I've already had some conversations on the side with some of you before we began today about opportunities to sit down and talk and find ways to work with each other, different ways to, to coach uh, the businesses that we work with, to train the businesses that we work with, to identify opportunities. So we're not here for rhetoric, we're here to do work. Uh, as the mayor uh, said, it's on us. And I gladly take that ground I'm glad you want to run with that and make that happen. So again, I will not stand between the ribbon cutting and the food. Uh, I will not do that. I know it's nearly lunchtime, but it's an honor to be before you, and we're looking forward to rolling up our sleeves and getting to work with the city. Thank you.